It has always been about money. And just to answer a question that was asked slightly earlier, um, the script for this was written first January 6, 2004. January 6, 2004. Who wrote the script? Murph. <laughs> At the conference called SARS and Bioterrorism. Uh huh. Bioterrorism and Emerging Infectious Diseases, Antimicrobials, Therapeutics, and Immune Modulators. Merck introduced the notion of what they called the new normal. Proper noun, the new normal, the new normal, which is the language that became the branded campaign that was adopted by the World Health Organization, mm -hmm. the Global Preparedness Monitoring Board, which was the board upon which the Chinese director of Center for Disease Control, Bill Gates's Dr. Elias of the Gates Foundation and Anthony Fauci sat together on that board of directors but the, the first introduction of the new normal campaign, which was about getting people to accept a universal pan-influenza, pan-coronavirus vaccine, was actually adopted January 6, 2004. So um, it, it, it's been around quite, quite a long time. Um, I'm not gonna belabor many more points other than to say that it was very clear that Merck knew that, sorry, that Moderna um, knew that it was going to be placed in the front of the line with respect to the development of a vaccine in March of 2019. And this is a very important date because in March of 2019, for reasons that are not transparent, they suddenly amended a series of rejected patent filings, which is a very bizarre behavior. But they amended a number of patent filings to specifically make reference to an intentional or accidental release, I'm sorry, their term, deliberate release of coronavirus. So in March, they amended four failed patent applications to begin the process of a coronavirus vaccine development. And they began dealing with a very significant problem that they had, which was they relied on technology that they did not own. Two Canadian companies, Arbutus Pharmaceuticals and Acuitas Pharmaceuticals, actually own the patent on the lipid nanoparticle envelope that's required to deliver the injection of the mRNA fragment. And those patents have been issued both in Canada and in the US and then around the world in their world intellectual property equivalents. Moderna knew that they did not own the rights and began trying to negotiate with Arbutus and Acuitas to get the resolution of the lipid nanoparticle patented technology available to be put into a vaccine. And we know, as I made reference to before, that in November, they entered into a research and cooperative research and development agreement with UNC Chapel Hill with respect to getting the spike protein to put inside of the lipid nanoparticle so that they actually had a candidate vaccine before which says that we need to have a coordinated global experience of a respiratory pathogen release, which by September 2020 must put in place a universal capacity for public relations management, crowd control, and the acceptance of a universal vaccine mandate. That was September of 2019. And the language of an intentional release of a respiratory pathogen was written into the scenario that, quote, must be completed by September 2020. Mm. This was the text where Mrs. Brundtland was heading this commission, isn't it? Well, this is the Global Preparedness Monitoring Board's unified yes. statement. Yes. There, there are a number of people who have taken 
credit and then backed away from credit for it. But yes, you're right. Am I right too when I say that also the ACE2 receptor uh, that the, it was already described in the patents before 2019? Yes, we have 117 patents with specifically the ACE2 receptor targeting mechanism for SARS coronavirus. So because they always say this is the new thing with the virus. No, it's not new and it has not been even remotely new. It's in publications going back to 2008 in the weaponization conferences that took place in Slovenia, in Europe, all across Europe and all across um, the DARPA infrastructure. We've known about that since 2013, it's, uh, it's isolation and amplification. And this, um, the amendment that Merck did to this, the, the rejected patent applications. So, is was it only about the fact that it's like deliberately, you know, like um, put into the environment or something, or did they add anything else? Well, so these were fa there were four failed patent applications that were um, essentially revitalized in m March of 2019. And it was Moderna. I misspoke. I, I spoke about Merck. It was Moderna. And I tried to correct that. I'm sorry that that didn't come through. Mm -hmm. But it's Moderna's patent applications that were amended in March of 2019 to include the deliberate release of a respiratory pathogen language. But those had not been rejected for some reason. They were just no. not, they were just sitting no. there basically. No, they, 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 they do processes similar to other pharmaceutical companies where they evergreen applications and continually modif modify applications to enjoy the earliest priority dates available. Okay. But that's why you have to go back and look at the amendment <clears throat> of the application records to find out when the actual amendment language was put in place. But yes, have, I mean, the, fa the fact yeah. of the matter is, um, and like I said, I'm not going to belabor all of the patent data, but but any assertion that this this pathogen is somehow unique or novel falls apart on the actual gene sequences which are published in the patent record, and then more egregiously falls apart in the fact that we have Peter Daszak himself stating that we have to create public hype to get the public to accept the medical countermeasure of a pan-coronavirus vaccine. And what makes that most ludicrous is the fact that, as we know, World Health Organization had declared coronavirus um, a, a, you know, kind of a, 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 dead, a dead interest. I mean, they, they, they said that, that we had eradicated coronavirus as a concern. So why, having eradicated it in 2007 and 2008, why did we start spending billions of dollars globally on a vaccine for a thing that had been eradicated by declaration in 2008, um, you know, kind of, kind of falls into the zone of incredulity, to say the least.